Well, good morning. I hope everyone's doing okay today. We're going to be doing some assembly programming as usual. Uh, today, we're hopefully going to be working on the Sam Coupe. So what I've been doing over the last week is I've been working on the YQuest code, which I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. Um, I've been finishing off the Amstrad version, just restructuring the program code into a different set of files by function. And um, I've actually ported the um, there's now a single platform specific file. There's a multi -plat there's multi platform files and there's a platform specific file. And so what I can do now is I can then recode that for different systems. So I've started off by doing the Sega Master System. The reason for that being is the Sega Master System is a quite um, easy system to write for, and it's also got a very different set of hardware requirements to the Amstrad CPC. The Amstrad CPC is, is running from RAM. The Master System is running from ROM. The Amstrad CPC is a bitmap screen. The Master System is a tile sprite based system. And so I've managed to port it to that. And so um, from there, what I'm going to do is port to other systems as well, hopefully. And um, I thought one of the best ones to do would be the Sam Coupe because the Sam Coupe has got nice, um, nice graphics, um, nice 16 color system. So we'll actually be able to use the same graphics as the. Um, as a master system, I believe, if my memory serves me correct, it's the same format. So we'll be able to use those, and as I say, hopefully we'll be able to, maybe we'll be able to get it done today. Oh, that's what I'm going to be aiming for. We'll just have to see how it goes. But anyway, um, programming aside, I hope you're all doing okay out there. I know things are a bit weird for everyone at the moment. Um, so I hope um, I hope you're, you're all okay and you've got plenty of toilet roll and um, you're not going completely insane from being stuck in all, in all the time. Um, you're here to mark my work. Well, my work might not work at all, so we'll have to see, um, Quasar. And hello, Rob. I hope you're doing okay over there. Um, I say, I know, I know everyone's. I know a lot of countries are locked in at the moment. Japan, Japan's not locked in yet, um, but who knows what's going to happen next. Anyway, um, I think we're about ready to start. So here we go. Okay. So. Here is the code. So, um, for starters, let's just go over what has um, what the situation now is. Then, so uh, YQuest has been split up now. If we just go here, so you can see, we've got a duff file there, but we've got YQuest multi-platform, which is the bulk of the code. The RAM definitions, which is the structures of memory, which are now a set of pointers rather than actual data, and data defs. These are fixed data entries that never change so you can see we've got the level definitions here we've got the uh, a few symbols defined here the starting player settings uh, and you can see I'm now using symbols to define the screen size because the screen size varies quite wildly um, and I mean you could the extreme example of that as you can see we've got three different versions of the title screen now one for the CPC which is 40 characters wide one for the master system, which is 32, and one for the game gear, which is just 20. So, got those. The RAM definitions are now a set of um, offsets from the base, which is user RAM, or YQuest RAM if you prefer. And then each one is offset there. So these will all be assumed to start at zero now, and they have to be initialized by the code. And that's because um, before I was using RAM of the program code and defining starting values for some of them. But on the master system, of course, it's offset to a particular position. So that wasn't going to work very well. So now we've got this version here. You can see we're defining some screen settings here. And um, you'll see dotted around the code odd, um, odd platform specific definitions like the screen position, which will vary depending on the screen size. So we've got all of that. And uh, if we just fire this up on the master system here. You can see our game running here. Now, I'm only using the tile map, so the, the movement is unfortunately a little bit chunky. But um, to use the sprites would have meant quite a problem because um, basically um, you know, you'd be hitting the sprite limits and things. And that would have been outside of really what I wanted to do with this game, at least at this stage. I mean, maybe later I'll do a different version. Uh, but basically, um, as I say, it would have been difficult to, you'd have had to restructure the logic of the game because the game's assuming it can have up to 40 um, sprites on screen and uh, 16 bullets on screen. And if you were using the um, sprites, the hardware sprites, that would have been a problem because that's more than the master system can show. 
So, um, hello there, Mark. Quite kind of you to join me today. I say we're, we're hopefully going to do some Sam Coupe version of this. So that's um, that's unfortunately the limitation on the tile system, but it's only designed as a, a sort of beginner tutorial game. Uh, so I, for now, I think that's acceptable. What I might do later on is write a software um, sprite routine for the Amstrad CPC and the other bitmap systems that mimics a hardware sprite system, you know, with sprite numbers and with um, handling of redrawing and things, and then write a game that used that on all systems and use hardware sprites on the systems that have them and use that software sprite driver. But as I say, this this isn't really appropriate for that, unfortunately. So anyway, so here's the... Um, is the Game Gear version. Now the Game Gear version will be much harder because the screen's tiny but you've still got the same number of enemies and things so uh, but as I say again I'm not um, it, it's just a bit of fun I really I'm, I'm not really intending this as a as a serious presentation of a game it's just it's just let's see what we can do with the original tutorial of um, bitmap graphics that was really what this was all about so anyway so that's what's changed since we saw it last um there's been a few logic changes as well in the um gameplay uh, nothing major just um it's changed the collision detection routine i've now made fire button two um stop the player dead in their tracks um i'm trying to think what else changed uh, there was a few tweaks uh, um i think i made some slight changes to the level difficulty as well but nothing um nothing um enormous you know it's not it's not had a rewrite or anything most of it's most of it's just been reorganizing the code to be honest so we're gonna start from the cpc version because the sam is a bitmap screen so we're gonna the cpc version is going to be closer to what we need that said the sega master system is going to have better, um, more appropriate sizing because the Sega Master System screen is the same size. Okay, so hang on that. Okay. And I need to remember how the second uh, the, the Sam Coupe screen works. I can't remember how. <laughs> okay, so let's get um Sam bitmap, this is what we want. Okay. So Okay, so we'll want that at the top of our code then. So we've got our stat pointer at BFFF here. Um, so let's have, shouldn't that be C triple zero really? Um, anyway, okay, so we'll have our user RAM at C triple zero. So that's where our data is going to go for the, um, for the for the variables the game needs. Um, we need a dummy. For starters, we're gonna have a dummy um, clear screen routine. I'll worry about writing a real one later, so we'll just put a return in here. And I also want to do get joystick. So Read joystick or whatever. Okay. So, so we're going to need. I'm, I'm just 
basically trying to get the code to compile first and then we'll um, put in all of the um, where did I just put that Will be location. I don't know. Uh, no, we're not doing the game gear today. We use we're doing the the Sam Capé. Um, there we go. Uh, so I just settings there. So okay, okay. So we need to put in our <clears throat> get screen pause and our get next line commands. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be Z I said eighty. Uh, I was doing some 6809 yesterday. I've started writing the tutorials. It's very complex though. Um, it's very different to the 6502. It's very different to everything. That's kind of the trouble, really. Uh, no, not, not, not a complaint. It just means, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a lot of work. <laughs> but um, anyway, it is what it is. So there we go. So let's get, get screen pause and get next line. Okay, and we want um, what do we want? On our sprite drawing routine, which is just here. Ah, this is the wrong version. Where's the? Um, there we go. This is the one we want. Use the comet to assemble on this sum itself. But fair enough. I mean, uh, I, I I just um, I I do everything with the um, with 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 Notepad plus plus because because it's because the multi platform thing. Um, if um, if I was just working on a system a single system, then I'd be doing things differently. But um, okay, where are we? I need the bitmap graphics. So I need this lot here. I think, um, I can't remember, I think they're the same format on the Master System and the SAM. I think, I don't think the SAM is planar. Eh, the Master System's plain, a bit plain, so I can't remember. We'll find out. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I am wrong. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we should at least get something on the screen. Oh, I made it in the wrong file here. I've got too many files open. Uh, okay. Got nothing on the screen. Why haven't I got anything on the screen? Because my program's crashed. That's why. Um, well, that's not good. Uh, why is my program crashed? <laughs> Um, ah, uh, look at that. What's that doing there? That's a that's a CPC command. Shouldn't have done that. 
that's why. It's no wonder my code's crashing. <laughs> well, something happened. Um, something happened. Not quite sure what it was. Hang on a minute. Okay. So we, we, we basically showed one character to the screen and then promptly crashed. And that one character was pretty messed up. Yeah. Um, I... Th uh, I Let's have a look at gets, but we we just need to go through each section and figure out which which part is the one that's malfunctioning. Ah, uh, sorry. There's nothing to see anyway. It's just crashing. Uh, okay. Um, I, I can guess what the problem is. So we've got push PC, yeah, there we go. So we've got push BC here and we've not got the pop. That's all it is. And usually when you, well, if, if you're getting like a crazy crash like that, um, you, your first suspicion should be that um, your pushes and pops are mismatched in a subroutine or your stack's getting corrupted, because it, it, it often means that there's a call going to totally the wrong place. I've put that in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, where are we? Here we go, it's here where it needs to be. Um, so there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, um, so the game's running. Um, I'm bouncing up and down because the, the joystick's malfunctioning because I've not written the joystick code. Um, and I was obviously wrong. Uh, I, I, I forgot. But I think the master system is, is plainer. And I need MSX style graphics for, for the SAM. So we can make those just fine if we just go to uh, just a moment. Ba, 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 ba. There we go, Hacker Sprite Editor. Um, and if we do load in the. Um, hang on a minute, where is it? Where's the font? There it is. Um, yeah, evil sandwich. I mean, say it, 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 usually when that happens, it's because um, it's because your um, program counter is running something it shouldn't have, and the most common causes of that are mismatched pushes and pops, or um, well, it's mostly that, or, or um, you know, stack corruption, uh, and then in extreme case, program corruption. But you know, like your code's got overwritten, but usually it's just the pushes and pops. Okay, so here's our font. So we just need to go to Z80. Um, save all eight, eight tiles here, that'll do us. And I'm going to call this um, MSX2 font because this will work for the MSX2 as well, I believe. Okay. And then, so that's our font. Okay, so I need to I need to change my drawing routines here because um, because our font is wider. Try and think. I think that should be right. I can't 
tell what's going on there, it's such a mess. Uh, okay, um, we need to, um, to take that out. No? What's wrong with it? Um, Or any of the text. Um, the text kind of uses the sprite routine as well. It's all kind of the same code. Um, I, so I, I think I know what, it's it's two parts of code that are malfunctioning, and it's just making it unclear which which one's the problem. Here we go. If I take this out. Okay. Oh, okay. Am I doing this the wrong way? Okay. Oh, there we go. That's that one right. So I'm getting mixed up on which way I'm shifting here. That's all it is. So if I um, add another shift left to shift shift right, is that? Right, the font's messed up still. So cursor X is in there as well, isn't it? I need to multiply by four. There we go. That's that's right. That's okay. Okay. So yeah, that's that's about right there. Um. So, what I need to do next. It's, yeah, I think I got it now, Quasar. I need to change the um, position of the text as well because it's, it's, this is the CPC version and it's designed for a 40 um, tile widescreen, not 32. Uh, the colors are wrong. Uh, we can deal with that in a moment, though. Um, so, w w what I'm going to do next is load and I'm going to load in the YQuest sprites here. They Not those ones, those are the wrong ones. So. And if we go to date T, oh, edit. Some coupe. I've drawn a pixel. I didn't mean to do that. That's going to mess up my export. Okay. Some coupe file. quest so we need to save all four frames of animation and sank pay file we have to do this manually there's no bulk exporter I've been lazy and not bothered right because there's so many export options I, I didn't want to write a second function for each of them so you just have to do this manually unfortunately Pay file hey. one, 
two, three, oh, okay. I'm forgetting how I'm number, I thought it was numbering them from zero. Okay, no, I'm not. And if I include these, No, that's not right. What's going on with my sprite? Okay, okay, I know it's right. I know what it is. Um, it's, it's the animation frame. Let me think this through. There we go, that's got it. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with Blank in the sprite, so <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there at all. Um, go right okay we're getting somewhere here slowly getting somewhere so if I now go to um, I need to change the size of the drawing routine for the title screen because we need to where is it I can't see it where is it go there's our title screen we're doing a bit better there uh, it looks like I need to fix the bottom boundary of the screen though um, there we go that's that fixed um, I can't see any enemies on the screen though I don't know what's going on there um yeah it's getting there we're getting there um okay should make a time lapse uh it's not an interesting idea i mean i could download the um what i could do mark is i could download all of the um live streams of the original programming and i could run them at like 500 times speed or something it'd be quite interesting wouldn't it maybe i'll do it could, could be fun um, I'll have, a, I'll, I'll have a think of that. It's, uh, but yeah, time lapse. I, I don't think a time lapse of this would be very interesting, but a time lapse of um, of the. Anyway, well, let me say, I'll have to have a think about that. It's not a bad idea. Uh, okay, so I need to now. Um, I need this. I'm just going to get a notepad up. One thing I am going to do, not on camera, but later, um, I'm going. I'm not going to do the palette because I'm actually adding new functions to Acosprite's editor because in the past um, I've been using this generic palette conversion code and using a common palette on all the systems but because this is designed to be part of the tutorials using the simple series I'm using native palettes in it and so I'm going to write a new system for the for each platform so that Acosprite editor can output the output Acosprite editor's selected palette in the in the native color 
organization of the system. So I'm going to need to reprogram AcroSpite Editor to get the palette right is, is effectively the result of that, which I think is definitely worth doing at this stage because AcroSpite Editor is um, pretty, pretty mature. So um, I think you know, if you're going to keep, if I'm going to keep adding things to it, I think that's the, that's a thing to add to it at this stage. So I'm going to add it. So LDHL comma zero, LDDE comma one, LDBC comma one nine. What's the one two eight times one nine two? That's the size of the screen. So LDHL comma zero, LDIR. So we're loading the first byte of the screen with the zero. The we're starting from one byte along, and then we're copying the entire size of the screen minus one byte and that will fill the entire screen hopefully with zeros there we go it did where's our enemies where are they why is there nothing on the screen um okay um i don't understand why we've got no enemies um that's a bit weird uh, okay <laughs> sure i don't quite understand that but we'll worry about that in a moment Okay. Where's how, how do we read the joystick on this? Um, it, it, the it's the 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 question evil sandwich isn't why the L is flickering. It's why are there no enemies? The L is flickering because all of the enemy sprites are blank and in the top left corner. That's why. Um, I, I I'm suspecting it's some kind of memory initialization problem. Um, but I'm going to check that out in a moment. It could just be a bug in the code that's crept in. Um, anyway, where's the, oh, okay, so we're using the firm, oh, that's a pain. Okay, well, we'll give it a go. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work nicely, but we'll try it. So we were using the, much to my um, disdain, we were using the firmware to read in from the joystick, from the keyboard rather. Okay, it does work okay. I was I was a bit worried. Um, I was a bit worried it was going to malfunction because of me disabling interrupts. So we'll Q A O and P. Um, okay, if if you like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure about Q A O P, but okay, whatever. Uh, okay, so we need to change our direction keys. Um, going on it's crazy stuff going on uh, I've obviously done something very silly there I don't know what that's all I don't know what all that noise is about sorry about that um, okay Can't move. What have I done wrong? Okay, um, I'm guessing. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. routine. Yeah, it looks the same. Can't move. I don't know why. I think, um, okay, I think what's wrong here is um, maybe we've got initialization, an initialization problem here. Um, but let's just take our CLS code again. And let's use that. I think the RAM that I'm using for the game variables have got some junk in them to start with, which um, is perfectly understandable. So we'll put this in here and we will clear user RAM destination user RAM plus one and um, that should be enough okay that's not helped I thought it was going to be the problem okay Let's, let's have a look at the Sega Master System 1. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, Quasar. I, I mean, yeah, I need to look at that as well. My first question is why, um, at the moment, I'm more worried about why the player, why the enemies aren't showing. So I need to work out what's wrong with those enemies first, I think. Maybe, maybe Quasar. I mean, I, I, that that's how I usually use the, the systems. Um, yeah. Um, I, I need to figure out. I'm, I'm at the moment. I'm more worried about why the why the enemies aren't showing because it might be sim It might be all the same problem. Something's going wrong, and I don't know what it is. Um, it's not good. Um. So I'm just looking look at the code trying to work out what's going wrong. This, I assume that this code must be failing. I don't know why though.
Level zero. So crystals three. So it's got my number of crystals. Let's just try something as an experiment. Um, let's change the number of crystals on the first level just to see if the the level in it code is actually reading in. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure it must be. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would be. Okay. Okay, I, um, maybe, maybe the problem's something else. Um, where's, where's the code? the problem um, what okay um, let's um, let's fire the thing up and let's use the debugger and have a look at the RAM I can't remember how to show the RAM it's one of these it's a, oh, how do I do how do I show the RAM on this thing? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember where the debugger works. Okay, I'm gonna make. What's that? Oh, that top area is wrong. Oh, well, that's not going to work very well. That's, that's, that's why my program's not working then. Okay. Um, that, that's why my game isn't working anyway, because I'm using a, an area of ROM. There we go. Oh, it's still not working. Okay. <laughs> um, Well, that's that's ruined that theory. Uh, okay. Yeah. to see numbers okay let's give it a go thanks for that There's no data. Okay, I, um, uh, right. Okay, I think I, I think I know what the problem might be here. Uh, I think it's the sprite routine. The sprite routine is using more registers than it does on the other systems. We're using IX here, um, and I think that's balling us up. So what we need to do here is if we put a um, 
push IX here and a pop IX here. There we go. Uh, some of those sprites are messed. Those, those sprites are messed up. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Um, um, okay. Well, we can worry about that in a second. Let's have a look. Hang on a minute. It's got to be a bug in get sprite address. Um, There we go. How did I go from my screen is black to the IX register is needed to be backed up? Well, I just remembered. Um, I noticed that the IX register was being used by the loop. Uh, th the problem was, um, Mark, that I noticed that there was no data in the RAM that was supposed to be drawing the sprites and then I, that was supposed to be defining the enemies. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute, the loops that use that are all using like IX and IY and things. And then I remembered, well, hang on a minute, the, the difference I noticed when I pasted in the sprite code is that this version uses IX and IY, well, it uses just IX, but I noticed it was using those index registers. And so I remembered, hang on a minute, my sprite routine's using index registers. I'm using index registers in the main loop. So that's, you know, that's a dangerous situation. And obviously in this case, it was, that was what was causing the problem. Okay, um, I just need to figure out why my joystick's not working now. Um, okay, I don't know if you can see that down here. Um, that's the key I'm currently pressing. So uh, the keys are getting in okay. Um, but they're not being processed. So. It, it seems to be working quasar. It's reading them in. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but um, but they're getting. It's it's some of the mistake that's causing this to fail here. So um, I'm wondering if it's this thing. I wonder if it's. Let's just try running this out. No, it's not that. Okay. Just checking the movement routines are working. see next to the score here it says Q which is the cube the button I'm pressing um, so I don't get what I'm doing wrong I don't get what the bug is what am I missing Hang on a minute. Yeah, it, it 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 did register the press. So why um, is it just the accelerations like getting ignore is too slow or something? I 
that's done that. I've still got a. Oh, I know what the problem is. Um, okay, I've made a mistake here. Um, this is really stupid. So fire should be space. Yeah, I was thinking the same, Mark. Yeah, you get mixed up, don't you? Um, now what it is is um, fire two um, suspend stops movement, but I've I've forgotten to reprogram it. It it should be if you hit enter you stop moving, but I've left it as bit five, which is always set, so it's always stopping the movement. I had this exact problem on the master system. I forgot to change that to an NZ here. There we go. Oh, a ZZ. That's a new command there. Yeah, we're moving. We're moving. Not moving left and right. Why aren't we moving left and right? What's going wrong? Our lines got our lines got deleted. Um, how did that happen? Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We can move now. We're moving. There we go. We can play now. We can play. I can't remember what the speed's supposed to I need to replay the Amstrad version and just double check the speed because I can't remember how fast it's supposed to be because it's like crazy fast on the um, on the master system. So there we go. So the game actually works now. I think we're done. The difficulty is it kind of plays differently on every system just depending on the on the graphical hardware, you know, how 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 wide the sprites are, how fast the screen refreshes are and things. There we go. Anyway, the game the game's working and if I hit enter I immediately stop moving. That was why it was that's why the player wasn't moving. It constantly thought I'd hit enter held down. Okay, so what I need to do next is I need to change the um, the title screen because I'm we got there in the end. We got there in the end. Uh, we got, got some time left as well. Okay, let's have a look. And it was just me being dumb that was taking. It took so long, to be honest. Um, it kind of always happens, to be honest. It, it's uh, it, it's hard. I mean, if you do port after port, like I did with the. Um, with the bitmap tutorial, you, you start to remember the the, the, the the traps you'll fall into, but not doing it for a while, you, you sort of forget everything. Um, so Sega Master System Y Quest, um, we want the f press fire to start screen. And so if I take this one, okay, we probably want this whole code actually. Let's just take the lot. Okay, and just put it here, and then um, we don't need the screen width twenty because that's just for the for the little Game Gear screen. There we go. So it's our title screen. Okay. And what I want now is I want, I'm going to, I thought I'd got, I've not got any palette code in here. Maybe I haven't. Okay, let's have a look somewhere else then. Have I got palette code in this one?
No, no, I haven't. A slight disappointment. Okay. Um. And so uh, I'm trying to remember the, the palette. Right, yeah, okay. So we need to, um, we need a one bit definition here. We need to, we need B to be the palette number. And we need C to be um, 248. Okay, I remember now. So if I go here, and if we put in some code up here, We need some palette code. As I say, I'm, I'm gonna make Acusprite editor make um, make a nice palette for us. I'll get it to do that. This is the master system version. I'm looking at the wrong code. Uh, it's not gonna go well. Uh, but for now, we just need some uh, some kind of palette to start with. There's too many files. I'm getting confused what I'm looking at. Okay, here we go. Palette. And uh, let's just do some. Let's do some just random data. I don't. I don't really care. Uh, let's, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Is this gonna all be too dark? B, C, D, E. Okay, we'll give that a go. That'll do for oh, suffer zero as well. Actually, I'm just going to put that as FF just so I've got some. I'm not sure how bright these are going to be, but I just want to start getting the code in. So I need something to start with. Let's not do that. We might. We won't be. <laughs> so let's use D. Um, load. No, actually, we can use B. Can't. Whoa. Um, load B with sixteen. Sub D. Load B with A. I'm just trying to think. I mean, is it, I don't think actually we could use it. We do this the other way. The other way is going to be easier. Load B with zero. Load C with two four eight. Load A with A from HL out C comma A ink HL. Sure, it's an easier way of doing this, but I can't remember it at the moment. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Doesn't really feel like I'm achieving very much there. So let, let's do um, deck D here, and we we'll use D as the counter. I could I could flip the palette the other way and start from palette entry 16 and go backwards but I don't want to do that because as I say I want Acusprite editor to output it in the correct format and that would feel backwards okay I don't think that's worked No, that's not worked. I forgot my. Oh no, I'm not forgotten the incal chow. What have I done wrong then? Ink B. I forgot the ink B.
looks quite. I quite like that actually. <laughs> it, looks, it looks quite good in that colour scheme. Uh, <laughs> that's a surprise. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know why. It was something. Something quite interesting about that. That kind of murky colour scheme. Um, but we're not going to go with that. We're going to stick with the, the default palette, but um, not not today because um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, as I say, I, I need to um, work on AquaSprite Editor to do that, and I don't have this machine really set up for that, so um, we won't do it. We'll we'll um, well, I'll get it. I'll get it sorted uh, after the live stream. I'll do it on my other PC. I'll edit Akaspite Editor. Um, YQuest is going to be included in the um, in the Sources 7-Zip this weekend. I'll be putting it in so um, you can get all of this. The, the code commenting's not finished. Um, it's mostly done though, actually, to be honest. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going through each of the files and there's going to be there's basically going to be two tutorial series. There's going to be a series of tutorials on YQuest. Um, the first one's going to discuss the, the, the multi-platform code, which is all of this kind of thing and um, all of this kind of thing. And then there's going to be one lesson per system. So CPC or Sega Master System or Sam Coupe. And it's going to discuss the the details of that system. And so that will be kind of an extension of the um, of the other tutorials where we were discuss where we've been looking at how to get joystick reading working and things. So that's that's my plan there. Um, they'll be coming very shortly, really, as soon as I've written them, basically. So um, we've got some time left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the multi-platform code and just um, just work on a bit more code commenting, to be honest. Just trying to make everything as clear as possible because um, as I say I'm going to be making make I'm going to be making um, documentation on on the code just in case I, I don't know if anyone's interested in it but as I say it's like um, I, I'm hoping it, it'll be a, a nice thing for people to look at who are trying to work out what kind of games they think they can create themselves you know just you know if you if you want to see how, how what you can achieve in uh, how many hours about 20 hours something like something like that it's had about 20 hours I mean the original um, series I think was about nine episodes and each episode is about two hours so uh, eight, 18 hours and a little bit more so um, let's say it's just hopefully it gives people some idea of what kind of thing they can hope for you know it's it's um, I think a lot of uh, it's important if you're trying to write your own game to not um, to not imagine you're going to create um, you know you're not going to create pinball dreams in ten hours, and so to um, you know not not to become disheartened, but just to sort of um, not be not be surprised that you don't manage it. You know you don't want to be disappointed in your work just because it's not the most amazing thing on the planet because nothing is really. Okay, anyway, um, so let's have a look at this multi-platform code. Oh, this needs a lot of work. So I, I need to go over all of this code and I need to document it. So for the remaining 45 minutes, we will do that. So this is the code that decides where an enemy is going to appear because they only appear at the edges of the screen. out this was um, this was me just um, making notes as I was converting it there we go so that's um, that's that routine the screen's too small with this massive font 
But suffice to say, I don't usually use this bigger font. Um, sometimes I struggle a little bit with it, but um, it's a lot clearer for the people watching at home. So, okay. is colliding. Object overlaps existing object. This is the code that creates a new positioned object, but we need to make sure some objects aren't overlapping others. Like if a crystal was overlapping a mine, you can't collect the crystal again, it's impossible. So that monstrous, monstrous chunk is, um, is doing that. Um, I'm gonna move this though. This I think should be part of this routine here because it's sharing the same code. Randomized location of object. There we go. I had to rewrite this code here. Um, the one I was using before wasn't done right. I actually stole the code from Chibi Aliens. <laughs> it took me ages to get it working on Chibi Aliens. I couldn't cope with it at the time. I'm really bad at doing the maths on these kind of ranging, ranging routines. So um, okay. So this is just checking if the object is in range and if it's not then it will it will set the carry if there's a collision it will clear the carry if there's no collision and that shouldn't be there that's nothing to do with collision where should the score be it shouldn't be there it should be somewhere else um, Yeah, I suppose it's as good as anywhere. Yeah, code's still quite big. Um, I'm not going to split it out any more into any more files than this, though. I think this is about optimal. Uh, I know some people disagree, but um, I don't. Um, I don't want it to be split out too much because you end up getting you you end up you know getting confused what's in what file. I've had that trouble quite a lot with Chibi Aliens because that's quite split out, and it it does get it kind of becomes confusing to work out because because there's code shared between different functions and things. It becomes a little bit tricky to work out what's going on. Collision program is the um, is the rules of the object. So what happens when the player hits the object, things like that. So um, let's see.
So if the, if the collision routine is zero and the player's been hurt, we've got a, I think we've got a list of them somewhere. Have we? Where is it? Ah, here they go. Here we are. So yeah, we want, we'll have this here. Let's make a sound. Okay. Now, this is, um, It, it, there's a limit to how many um, crystals are shown on screen. And this again comes down to, you know, if you were going to use hardware sprites for this game, you might need to think of your logic code differently. Wait. Respawn crystal. Okay, and we're giving the crystal a new position. That's just removing crystal, removing the crystal. So that stops the, the movement because we're going to show the death animation and if we if we didn't stop the movement the player would keep flying as they were dying which looks weird. I did try it, it didn't work, it didn't, didn't look good. So good. No fan game. It's amazing how much code it takes to do. I mean, this is a simple, simple little game, and it's just like amazing how much code there is involved in it, unfortunately. And that, that's kind of the problem. Um, yeah, it'd be, be nice to do more complex games, but, you know, even Pong. Even Pong was a lot too, so. What can you do? Um, Wondering whether to change these to ret commands. I think we will. It'll be clearer. Uh, I mean, it it would be a pain if there was pushes and pops and things, but um, I think um, let's check. I've not. Oh, I have. I've, there's another one. Where is it?
collision to still work anyway. And I, this isn't this kind of isn't necessary but I, I figured it'd be easiest just to use a sort of template of data and we're just copying the eight bytes of the template over the um, the current player settings so that's the way I'm doing that really tidy that up shouldn't I um. My math is terrible, I can't do this in my head. 20 minus 7 plus 1, 14. Hang on a minute, that's in, no, are we, sorry. Sorry. Um, it's, it's tough to know well, it's tough to know when to um, split them out like that um, and when not to uh, I'm tending to split them out when I'm using um, using the constants the symbols to calculate the screen position but um, in in that case um, it was it, it, it was too complex to work out the position from the symbols I felt so I've just done it in that way instead That's interesting. The lives is starting to zero. It's zero there. That's not right. Um, why is that? would that be? I don't understand why that would be happening. Hang on a minute.
I know why it is. I know why it is. It's the memory here. It's because it's 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 in the area that's being bank swapped. Um, I need to take this out here. Oh, I've taken too much out. <laughs> that was stupid. Uh, which is the it, it's the um, low one. I need to leave the high one. There we go. It's um, I'm I'm paging in the graphics memory only when I'm drawing. And the range, um, the range that I'm using for the RAM is actually in that paged area. That's why the problem. That was why that was happening. I thought there was something weird happening earlier. I, I, I thought, I thought I'd only died once, but when I restarted it, it didn't happen, and that was because the second time you played it, it worked okay. Okay, fire bullet play depending on player direction. Settings you have to set up. A bit confusing there, but it's okay. Okay, I'm just going to move that. That's not really in the right place there. Um, it's making the sound even if the enemy can't shoot. So let's um, change that. Exactly the same code, essentially. Um, I, I mean, I suppose in th I'm not going to bother, but in theory, I could actually um, condense these to be the same thing. Um, I don't want. I don't really want the extra testing time, but you could do. You could actually use the same code for both, if you if you wished. But uh, as I say, I'd end up having to debug all the code again, and I'm not short of memory, so I'm not going to bother. The um, the movement speeds are slightly different, actually. Um, I, I changed the, the accelerations different, so I did change the rules a little bit. So as I say, though, you, you, that would be something you could um, you could change if you wanted to um, try and condense the code down a bit. Anyway, 
Anyway, there we go. So. Apologise, this isn't particularly interesting. Um, I don't really, unfortunately, I'm sort of halfway. I don't really have anything I can sort of jump onto from this, so I'm just finishing off the um, video, you know, updating the co commenting the code because it needs doing anyway. So, from level map. I'm going to move this though. This, this can go down here, it'll be clearer. I've got a cup of tea here and I've not drunk it, it's gone cold. That was a bit dumb. Making making tea for my live stream, they're not drinking it. That's not very really, not much point to that. Okay. Okay. off here should be more indented there there we go that's old um, you can't select multiple lines and indent them on um, on the um, WinApe that's one of the limitations of it WinApe isn't perfect it's just it's just quicker than doing everything in like this so um, I do prefer it but um, what this is doing <laughs> what's this do checking the size of that there, it's fine.
is just for the player. I think this is just for the player. So we'll be doing just another few minutes of this and then I'll be calling an end to this live stream. I mean, we've, um, you know, we, we've, we've basically done everything anyway. I just, as I say, just, just, just I'm cleaning up the code a little bit. Just in some cases, trying to remember how the one thing works. Um, This code here is um, when you kill an enemy that their um, their collision um, is set to two five four. But after a random period of time, they'll respawn. So that's what that is. So there we go. So it uses, um, we're using Cheapy Sound, which is the same little sound driver that I wrote for Grime. It's the only way to get any kind of sound going up this quickly on this many systems. So uh, it, it's it, it's not as good as Arcos Tracker, but it, it's good enough for a simple little thing. here in places um, it's, not too, it's not too bad I mean it's it's what it is this random number generator is a little bit comp I know I know it's a bit excessive but this is um this is the random number generator that I created for um, chibi aliens and so it, it had already had a lot of testing so I was reasonably confident in it so I know I know it's excessive but as I say it's like it was I didn't want to write a new one. I just thought I would stick with stick with what I know even though it's a bit over the top. 
Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to call it a day at this point. I think um, I think we've made reasonable progress. So let's go over to thanks for watching. If I can make a correct screen here. Well, I hope everyone's found this vaguely amusing. As I say, if you want to get the source code for any reason, um, then it will be included in the Sources 7 zip um, by Monday. It'll be uploaded on probably Sunday. Uh, it is free open source, so you're welcome to download it and modify it and do whatever you want with it. It's not, you know, you don't need to. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's good enough for you to make anything off, but if you can, then go ahead and enjoy it. So, um, as I say, that's uh, that's going to be available to everyone. Uh, thanks, Rob. I hope you've enjoyed this. And um, as I say I know everyone's possibly, depending on your country, um, having a bit of a rough time of things at the moment. So I just hope you all. I uh, hope you all do well and I hope you can get everything you need you know I know some shops are selling out and things so you know take care of yourselves and if you've got time off work and things I hope you manage to make the best of that time such as you can uh, thanks for watching today have fun goodbye now